Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show you uh, what I have done on my CPU so far, and show you it in manual operation. I want to show an intermediate state for my CPU so that you could see what the internal functions are, which will, which will later be governed by the program memory. I'm doing this before adding the program memory because afterwards it would be uh, hard, harder to access the individual components. So I've set things up so that uh, all the con controls are can be manually operated, and I'll just do a a, a function, uh, do some simple operations, uh, so you can see how this works. Currently, the uh, CPU is set to function one one zero zero, which is load value. This makes that orange line light up. Which, uh, co which turns stuff off. Anyways, it means that values on the red and yellow inputs here go into uh, go are taken as ALU inputs are taken as inputs in the ALU, and it just spits them out. It actually is adding two numbers together, but that that's not that's a relatively unimportant detail. What's important is that what goes in comes out. So this number, uh, yeah, I think that's 49. 49, I'm going to save that to, oops, don't fall down. Save that to register 1, because I'm super creative about this. Uh, yeah, so it's load value, uh, 49 on the inputs, register address 1 for where it will be saved, and I press the button, or I destroy the button, and it is saved. Probably. I think it's saved. Uh, yes, yes it is saved. Now, the value is actually stored left to right here, or right to left. It, it's stored backwards, because one of the problems uh, you encounter in, when working with circuitry is that uh, if, it's or, if it's oriented right to, if the numbers go right to left, or right being the smaller bits and left being larger bits, uh, if, they, if you're set up to do it in the correct order one way, as soon as you turn around, it's backwards! So, yeah, sometimes you have to intentionally make things backwards to make them work forwards. So, right, I have the number 49 saved to register 1. Now, my second operation will be... Mm, let's add... No, uh, just 15. Or, no, let's save 15 to register 2. Okay, that's saved. And now, let's get into some interesting stuff. Now that the inputs are saved to memory, we can start using them. I'll First of all, let's do just some addition. So, 0, 1, 0, 0. Hmm. Okay, and there was a bit of lag when I did that. Ah, uh, right. And currently, when I do that, now the these levers no longer correspond to no longer feed into the ALU, or these inputs no longer feed into the ALU, but are used as the addresses for the inputs. And this is what they're used for mo most of the time. It's just, y uh, I did some special reconfiguring for load value, so that, uh, act so that when you write a program, you can just have the program, have values entered in, in the program itself, as opposed to having, de having to depend on external inputs. So, Let's see... 
uh, oh, and register address zero just contains nothing. So that, that can be useful here. Let's see what's in register one. Hey, look, it's that first number we entered. Right now, it's actually showing register one plus zero. So 49 plus zero is 49. If I look at register two, you'll see there's 15. So we have 49 and then plus zero. Now I'm going to change this, or yeah, there's register one plus register zero. I'm going to change this to register one plus register two. And it's 64. Pretty nifty. And 64, I can save that to memory as well. Uh, and I'm going to write that to register 7. Because you see that, that line over there? I modified the out register 7 to uh, spit out an additional output at the very top. So when I tell it to record, to save, which I've just done, it's now storing 64, which is just that bit over there, because remember, the bits in memory here are backwards. Or if we just turn around, it's forwards. And so I was able to, s so just with the manual operation there, I was able to enter two numbers and do, a m yeah, save them to memory, do a math problem, and if I want, I can change this to subtraction. 49 minus 15. Yeah, so re register 2, no, register 1 minus register 2 is uh, 32, yeah, 34. Yeah, that's right. Yay, it's nice that my thing actually does math correctly. So yes, every operation that this uh, that this CPU does is going to be a 4-bit function select followed by 4 bits of the a of the at of the first address of of the fir of the first input address I call that input A then 4 bits of the second input address input B followed by 4 bits of the output address, so where, where the answer gets saved to. It'll be the function, the numbers you want to uh, the numbers you want to crunch, and where you, where you put the answer. And putting that information in in every cycle will be, well, one instruction. And what program memory will be is just a collection of 16 bits, which are loaded in sequence, which set the program or which set the function and the, and the addresses that are used. Yeah, the addresses for getting the inputs and the outputs. But with also the special feature that the load value operation uses these address values as regular values. So this means that I can get a lot more mileage uh, out, out of just 16 bits. I can reuse them for different purposes. So, that is an o the overview of yeah how, how manual operation on a CPU works. And the next video is probably going to be showing you this, but with program memory, memory, and it will be executing something automatically, which will be somewhat more cooler. Also faster, because yeah, it's, it's, it'll be a computer actually running something, and automatic and everything. Okay, Hans Lemerson, signing out.